Hello, beautiful souls. How are you? It's been quite a week, hasn't it? We've gotten so much content out. I hope you're enjoying it. I get lots of good feedback. Today, I am covering a fan favorite. Uh, she's very much like myself. You either love me or you hate me. Kind of like licorice. <laughs> um, the Sophia Dragon Tribe is full of, I like to think of it as the best of the best. And it's not new. I think a lot of us in, in this time are just coming to the information because our frequency is available. It's it's a, allowing the information to reach us in a, in a way that it wasn't before. Um, divine feminines are waking up and realizing their power around the world. And the more that that happens, the more the communication gets shared. And so um, if you are a woman, I definitely invite you to share this series out. It's helpful in many, many ways. You never know what little nugget of information is going to be that aha moment for one of your divine feminine sisters, um, moms, cousins, and they realize their power and they start taking it back. And that really pisses them off, you know, the controllers. So let's do more of that. As I speak to you right now, um, there are those that do not want this information out. And I am sending teams out to take care of lots of attacks. But we are moving forward because I will not be dismayed. I will not be deterred. So today's video is on none other than Magdalene. I do not use Mary Magdalene because Mary was never part of her name. It was um, a moniker given to a lot of the, the women of the day. Now, some genuinely had the name Mary, um, like Ascendant Master Mary, aka Mother Mary. But many women were just called Mary, and it was almost synonymous with just female. If you were female, you didn't, they didn't need to know your name. They just called you Mary. So Mary was never really her truly given name. Her given name was Magdalene, and she prefers to be called Maggie by those that know her and love her. So let's get into it. Sophia Dragon Tribe, Divine Feminine Ascendant Master Magdalene, also known as She of a Thousand Angels. Maggie's key code five of the Sophia Code. This is her oracle transmission. It awakens you as a vehicle to your own awakening. You are an angel on earth. Yes, you. And I am right here beside you, supporting your, pr your prayers to become an essential leader in the global movement of the divine feminine Christ. Magdalene is a mentor for the spiritual revolution. And honestly, that's her energy and Yeshua's energy is just so perfect together because he truly does enjoy flipping tables. He enjoys calling people on their crap and making sure that they understand, nope, I didn't say that. Nope, you, you got my message wrong or you completely ignored it or you burned it or whatever. Um, and correcting the record. Okay. If they're going to be known for things, they want to be known for the truth. So she's very excited that, that her story gets shared in a true manner. And that is what I aspire to do. Again, Maggie, my Sophia embodiment title revi reveals my oversoul's commitment to shine the greatest angelic light in the darkest of places. I work with every order of angelic guides to reconcile the suffering of the world and others. <clears throat> Wherever I am invoked as an overlighting presence, I am joined by billions with a B of accompanying angels. In my most recent lifetime, I came as a lightning revolutionary for change of an entire generation of women brutally subjugated to the status of property. Most of this first bit of information I'm giving you is out of the Sophia Code. I have a lot of respect for Kaya and the work that she's done in the Sophia Code. It's not 100% accurate based on my conversations with Maggie and the other um, Sophia Dragon Tribe members, but it is very close. And so I definitely thank her for this information. Maggie, 
My mother was a wise woman who privately maintained her worship of the divine feminine, according to the lineage of her grandmothers. And during her pregnancy, she received multiple messages from other seers who predicted my birth as a returning prophet. My parents recognized that I was gifted with channeling, healing arts abilities, and I was a very intelligent woman who wielded the sword of truth. I was born awakened with psychic development of my many lifetimes already activated within my body. And my parents watched as I grew into uh, my more abilities came online and processed visions of humanity's destiny. And she recounts many times where her family found her in a trance like state. And this was at a, as a young child, like two to three in a trance like state, because she was seeing being shown visions of humanity's downfall in the future. And the, the, the hurdles that we go through to get to this now moment. And, um, and she, of course, as a little one, she had to learn how to process all that that was being shown to her while she had all the wisdom. She was still, um, you know, in the body of a small child, Maggie, although I was raised wealthy with status and secret education that honored the divine feminine, the first part of my life was spent far away from interacting with most people or in public spaces. A female of any age, especially one with courage to assert her boundaries, could be harmed or legally stoned to death for any random projection placed upon her by an angry man. My parents pushed me to self-mastery of my spirit and my emotions using meditative practices prior to spending time in public spaces of the insane world I was born into and to liberate it. So she was, she knew when she arrived on this planet in her last incarnation, the one that we know her of as Magdalene, that she would go through all these struggles to then liberate the very people that wanted her dead. My family's wealth afforded me my homeschool education with train trips abroad with my father to mystery schools in Egypt, Mesopotamia, and India. The kindred spirits I met in my journeys quenched my thirst for our friendship once back to my unusual home life sequestered away. The solitude of my home life afforded me many opportunities to practice my mystery school lessons. And I met with my mystery school friends, ascendant masters, angels and archangels, and countless galactic beings on the inner planes. So we do that in our soul family. We set our intentions to go to a common area and we energetically go there and the clairvoyants see us and describe what they see. And we'll use our, our clairs and our, and our abilities and we can sense what's happening and we get to have that, um, that communion together. It's pretty neat. Many times I received messages and visions that I would one day meet far more of my soul family who was all gifted just like us. My heart ached for all the people suffering in the brutal time period. The huge empathic abilities I had were severe when I would literally feel my throat close as an area woman was being raped and beaten into submission or even killed. My mother knew these events tormented me. She encouraged me to focus on secret practices with Sekhmet, Kalima, and Inanya as wrathful aspects, as well as the wrath, wrathful aspects of Green Tara to cast out the darkness and invoke clearings, healings, reconciliations for all I prayed for. Once I was of marrying age, my family's wealth and status allowed for me to inherit my grandmother's wealth. And that allowed me to choose if marriage was right for me. My father promised my mother I would never be forced into an arranged marriage. And regardless of marital status, my training would always be supported. In all of Palestine, I was one of a handful of women afforded this protection and personal autonomy. Very sad. 
I happily opted out of young marriage and focused on my mystery, mystery school trainings, choosing to go to Mount Carmel to study. I spent as much direct time mentoring with Mother Mary as my primary teacher. We would sit in her rose garden, and then she would remind me, I was the whole rose. Not just the beautiful petals, but the thorns too. And never be ashamed of your thorns. Mary took me under her wing. She taught me as a divine daughter. Mary's own radical embodiment of fierce divine love opened my heart far beyond what I thought was possible. Mary's influence helped me temper my wrathful side and identified that I identified with Sekhmet, Hathor, Kalima, and the green and white tower. Mary introduced me to her most important allies, a guiding light master called Kuan Yin. In this time frame, I immersed myself in my teachings with the divine team of ascendant masters and divine feminines. I grew into a radiant, deeply grounded, eloquent spiritual teacher, a highly refined oracle, and it was essential that a divine feminine Christ teaching embodiment capable of leading men and women be available to support the spiritual revolution that would ignite Palestine with the return of Mary's son, Yeshua. Get the tingles when I'm reading her story. <clears throat> Our ministry would create the opportunity and physical protection to freely walk as a sovereign woman, offering my direct teachings in collaboration with his own. I met Yeshua at a wedding Mary invited me to attend. Yeshua's embodied such an ease with himself and around others. I found myself in awe and watching him secretly. Our conversations that night happened in multiple languages, telepathically, all at once. We engaged in a soul connection and each other's and appreciated each other's highly refined, intuitive gifts. We spent every moment after that that we could living the ministry and performing miracles. The community with the people allowing them to soak in our high frequency, energy, and wisdom. She re she told me about many times that they would gather in um, in circles, and that many times it was just normal conversation. There was no like preaching. There was no agenda. None of that stuff. And as they discussed whatever was being discussed, that many men and women would just lay back in their spot and soak in the frequency, just soak in the frequency of Yeshua and Maggie and their light that they brought. And Mother Sophia would come down and embody Maggie to brighten her light so that it had more of an effect when they had the the group of people around them. Maggie's key code five reveals an ancient Shekinah lineage of the Magi and the Oracle's high priestess known throughout the cosmos as the order of Magdalena. This sacred order of women that have incarnated as revolutionary angels on earth and in other star systems for a millennia. For example, Joan of Arc, is a Magdalena high priestess in our order. Joan of Arc is one of my previous incarnations. As our lightning, divine feminine Christ mentor, lighting your way, I guide human aware awareness in how to accept and love yourself as an e angel on earth. Allow me to support your journey to dissolve the darkness as my entire lineage assists you to step forward upon your own heroic path to embody the diamond light that devours all darkness. The divine feminine Christ leaders have you right by their side always and vice versa. <clears throat> I first channeled Maggie in November of 2023. Uh, it took some time for uh, channeling abilities uh, for me, for them to come online. 
I could do it ahead of time. I, I could do it before then, but I really um, honed it in around October, November of 2023. And the very first video content that we did from her um, was her describing the differences between the divine feminine archetype and the feminist archetype. So if you're interested in that video, it's on Rumble. I am not 100% certain if YouTube took it down. They may have, but it's there. And I'll put the link in the description. Let me make a note of that. Yes, I will forget. Okay, note made. It'll be in the description of this video. So we discussed the overreach, Maggie and I, of various religions. They feel compelled to divide. And in my words, patriarchal assholes, they want the division. They want you to feel weak. They want you to feel disempowered. They want you to feel like they're the only ones that can help you. When in truth, your power is within you. Prior to this time, prior to the time that Magdalene lived on this last incarnation, Prior to that time, women had power, position, prosperity, wealth, wisdom, status, and respected in the communities. And she explained this to me uh, back in November when I first started to channel her. Um, the It was like that for so long ahead of that time period because the, historically, the men were gone. The men were soldiers and they were fighting all these very, very long wars and battles and they went all over the countryside. And the women maintained the home and they maintained the children and they had the, the property. And so it made no sense for anything to be in the, the, the man's and the husband's name because they were gone. They could not um, facilitate any purchases or anything like that. And so, and many times when they left, they didn't come back. So that is how things were. It was, it was a matriarchal society because they were the constant. <clears throat> there were many in higher consciousness abilities that could communicate with angels, archangels, earth animals, gods, and source creator. And this is the way. Women had choices to focus their energy on in their lives. So again, I do see it sometimes where people speak about new age spirituality. And I guess there's a measure of that. Like there's a, you know, there's a spin on different things and whatnot. I truly find that we are going back to um, the way that it used to be a very long time ago, especially the more we get our memories, the more that we resonate with things that come to us from the past. Then, of course, we can separate out the drama and the karma and the lessons and pull the, the light and the fruit of that time forward and put it back into practice in a meaningful way in the higher consciousness uh, communities everywhere, which is exactly what we've done in the fifth dimension. <clears throat> when we embody divine feminine traits, healthy boundaries will be enforced the power center is source creator. We love humbly. We protect our power. There's no casual sex. We truly embody the power of the woman as portals to bring life through. The holy chalice is your holy vessel, your body. Protect it. Honor it. And love it always. Divine feminines are unique visionaries with fertile, life-producing, loving, nurturing, powerhouses with great spiritual intu intuition and harmony and the divine masculine balance of the divine feminine is the strength the analytical mind the passionate essence to provide safety security shelter and seeds of life there is a balance in that within each of us there's a divine masculine side and a divine feminine side and an inner child and all three being healed and balanced is what makes you fully embodied of those characteristics know who you are know why you are here it is your divine superpower it is your birthright and it is within you 
Maggie and Yeshua helped create the divine feminine and divine masculine activations on Violent Lotus Energy. They communicate with us often and they do communicate with us often. They truly do adore each other. They have the the pick and play and the sensual and the sexy side and they laugh a lot and very relaxed. And um, Yeshua, I call DJ Yesh because he communicates with us in song a lot. He sends us music. He sends us songs that have messages. He sends us songs to uplift our spirits. He sends us songs to um, confirm things. He's very funny. Yesterday, I asked Maggie, after all of our many, many conversations, did she have something that was new and fresh that we hadn't talked about before for this series? And after a little bit of banter, because that's my girl, she gave me this. Self-love and self-care, sexual and sensual healing, and the fulfillment of our desires. These tend to be tattoo wo taboo words in your society, but not in all societies. Other cu cultures are open about these conversations. This is just one hurdle for the divine feminine, some of which who are brainwashed, mostly do the church's overreach that are speaking. They are fearful of even speaking any of these words because they have been brainwashed that they're going to go straight to hell. Hell is a lower dimension. It's just a lower dimension. And heaven is a higher dimension. I hate to break it to you. The truth is knowing yourself and knowing what you like and don't like, and not just the sex stuff, but knowing you, knowing your love language, knowing what makes your heart race, knowing what makes you excited, knowing what is a turnoff, knowing what your daily joy is, knowing that this puts a smile on your face and this doesn't. This is really important. I cannot tell you the number of people that I work with that have so lost themselves in the matrix, in the mud, in the muck. They have been pulled apart uh, energetically. They don't even know who they are. They don't know what they like. They just do what everybody else does. And so their first order of business is to get to know themselves again, to understand who they are again. Maybe they never understood. Maybe they never had a clue. Maybe they never felt comfortable enough or protected enough, which is quite common, um, to even go there, which is all part of the plan that we have been blowing up, by the way. And I love it. Lucy. We, with the Sophia Dragon Tribe, are so very grateful to see what is coming. The information that you're providing, the evolution of so many, and the destruction of the complete bullshit that has totally oppressed more than half of the population for thousands of years is stopping. We are frankly tired of seeing the fallout of it, and we understand the reasoning and the process behind it. But now we are ready to fucking rise. Ooh, go Mags. She likes to use colorful language and I fully support that. To everyone in the collective, male and female, we say, let your light shine. Somebody doesn't agree with what you're doing, but it aligns with your soul contract. You resonate with it and you're not causing harm. Do it. Do it. It is not up to us to determine how other people receive our truth. It is up to us to speak it, stand in it, defend it, protect it, and let others deal with it however they choose to. So go with it. You don't need someone else's permission to be your true self, period. She kind of did a and peaced out after that. And I just freaking love her. I mean, you just got to love her. Like I said, kind of like licorice. And I love her. So if you resonate with Maggie, if you resonate with the struggles, the oppression, the warrior side that you haven't let out yet, if you have visions of a better life, if you truly want to 
let down the divine masculine side, because that's really where we've been working on for a long time is we've had to do it all. We've had to be the divine masculine and the divine feminine because divine masculines were robbed of their true traits as well. And so we felt unprotected. We felt unsheltered. We felt like we had to be the security and the visionaries. And of course, security is going to trump vision. Security is going to trump joy and bliss. So balancing that requires healing. It requires clarity. It requires very intense scrutiny of your circle so that you can enforce good, healthy boundaries and stay clear. If any of this resonates, please stop by violetlotusenergy.com. Check out our services. The first thing you'll need is a QET session. You can book the Divine Feminine, Divine Masculine activation. It is up to Megan and Yeshua which levels you get. And they have always added bonuses in all their sessions. If you are just one part of a, a twin flame union. So if I'm working with the Divine Feminine, let's say. Then Yeshua works with the divine masculine if the higher self agrees. And usually the human male is none the wiser, but they get the benefit of it. So it's beautiful. And it's all with grace and ease. And the permissions come from the divine, from Mother Sophia and source creator. Thank you for joining me. And I will see you again tomorrow with another showcase of Sophia Dragon Tribe's Divine Feminine Ascendant Masters. Tomorrow was going to be one of my favorites, Kuan Yin. Take care.